Come on, let's give the Lord a big clap offering right now. Can we do that? Amen. Well, you could be seated for a moment and then we'll jump right back up. Promise you we'll get out in time where you could watch your NFL game. <laughs> NFL stands for not for long. You know what I mean? So, anyways, it's all good. Hey, so glad you're here today and um, I'm glad I'm here today and just uh, want to greet you. And uh, it's such a blessing always to see you, um, always to see your faces, always a uh, blessing to see the building and able to see everything that's happening. Uh, we get, I get the privilege of being on your advisory board to your pastor and really um, helping out in uh, often the big decisions that are taking place. And you guys are on the cusp of a massive miracle. And, um, and really, um, what you're stepping into it and I think one thing that's so beautiful about what Pastor Josiah and Pastor Marie have been very intentional about um, with you know the women's uh, event and the book that came out and all this great stuff was you know where you're going you know what's gonna happen anytime you put fish it always grows to the size of the fishbowl and so and so when, when, when you move into that bigger building, your life's going to exponentially grow. Because as fish, you grow to that size of that fishbowl, right? But they've been very intentional about not where you're going, because you know where that is, but who you're becoming. And it's going to be the goal that your life becomes the size of the building you guys are about to step into. Which means every area in your life, come on somebody, is going to grow in Jesus' name, right? So let's stand as we get into God's word and I got a word for you and it really, it's gonna bless you and goes kind of along the miracle season that you're in right now and goes along with the fact that um, it's, it's, it's not where we're going, it's who we're becoming. And I really believe God has a word for you. Ephesians chapter one, Paul's writing to the church at Ephesus. He says this in verse 20 of chapter one. He worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and he seated him at his right hand in heavenly places, far above all principalities and power, might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also which is to come. I, I wanna focus on the fact that he worked in Christ and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. I wanna to talk to you today about the power of a better seat. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the spirit of revelation and give our minds illumination that we would experience transformation. God, I pray you give us a mind to perceive and a heart to receive all that you have. And I ask that after this message, we'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, come on. And all the people that slept in to come to the later service say, amen. You may be seated today in Jesus' name. I love the Bible because the Bible is very specific. And yet, when we open up our Bible, we see not only what Christ became, but who he was. Jesus at one time was at the right hand of God and he was his son. He had not yet been our savior because he had not been yet sent to take on a human body. And he did later to fulfill the law and become the ultimate sacrifice, but he had to leave one place to come to another. And so when Jesus left being at the right hand of God to come down to earth, he came as the son of man. And as he ascended back to God to go back to his rightful position, being at the right hand of God, He's now the savior of the world. He's the king of kings and, and the Lord of lords. And so we see the fact that what Paul's writing about, that, that Christ is now seated in heavenly places and God has given him dominion over everything. And part of that was, was that while Jesus was on earth, he had to actually fulfill 
four different kinds of seat. The first was the teacher seat. That teacher seat primarily was used for the prophets. They would be called to speak the word. And Jesus came with a different kind of message. His message was one of grace, one of peace, one of unity. Jesus was the one that would have spoken the word, not only that, but also fulfill it. So he, he fulfilled the prophet seat. And then there is the mercy seat. And the mercy seat was where the priest stood. Well, we all know that Jesus was the high priest and he fulfilled those priestly duties while being on earth. And then there is the ruler seat. And that seat was primarily for kings. And we realize that Jesus fulfilled that seat because Jesus walked in authority. Amen. He cast the demons out. He raised people from the dead. He was given all authority. And then finally, he is now in a place, being at the right hand of God, at the judgment seat. And that day will come. And yet Jesus and Paul reminds us that Jesus just didn't come on earth to fulfill those seeds. But he went even further than that. He said, listen, I'm not going back to be at the right hand of God, seated at the right hand of God, and not give you the opportunity to have those seats as well. So not only did Jesus come and fulfill those three seats, he invites you to sit with him. Matter of fact, the Bible talks about it. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love, which he had loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made alive together with Christ and raised us up together and watch this, and made us sit together in the heavenly places, which is Christ Jesus. So Jesus comes and fulfills those seats. Then he invites you to sit with him, which he gave you the same seats for you to fulfill. So on earth today, we are acting as priests. It's why Peter says we are a royal priesthood. Why? Because at the end of the day, we are called to share the good news of Jesus Christ. We also are to fulfill the mercy seat, which means we extend grace to people when we don't feel like. In other words, if someone hurts us, we don't go hurting people. We offer the same grace that Jesus offered us. And then you got the ruler seat, which means that Jesus says, all authority that's been given to me, I now give to you. In other words, you're to walk in power. You're to walk in dominion. Come on, and you're the one that's supposed to cast out demons and step on serpents. Why? Because you've been invited to that seat. Now, Pastor Obed, what does a seat mean? Well, the word seated, it means to be complete, rest. It's, it's finished. It's watching my works work. How many know you don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't watch by standing? You're watching while you're seated. You're not, you're not resting when you're standing. You're actually resting when you're seated. The Bible's specific that Jesus isn't standing at the right hand of God. He's seated at the right hand of God. Which means if he was standing, he would still be working. Come on, how many know Jesus isn't working today? The Holy Spirit is. But Jesus is at the right hand, seated. Why? Because his work is already finished. And so because his work is already finished, he's seated at the right hand of God. But then he says, you're seated as well, which means you and I don't have to stand and fight. We got to sit and rest and let God do the fighting for us. 
come on, we're not working for victory. Come on, somebody. We're working from victory. Why? Because the victory has already been won. So what Jesus is trying to tell us, he's sitting there saying, hey, listen, all you got to do is sit on my seat. When you sit on my lap, we're sitting together in heavenly places. And guess what? When the battles come against you, watch my word go to work. And I'm telling you, you don't have to get, you can just rest. So, so Jesus brings us to this place and we're seated because seating is resting. Well, the highest form of faith, when you're operating in faith, is when you're resting. Matter of fact, none of you go to bed at night, close your eyes, and not think you're going to wake up the next day. So what do you do? You rest. And when you close your eyes, you already know you're going to wake up the next morning. You're operating in the highest form of faith. And, and guess what? When you wake up, you ain't tired. You're energized. Amen. How many of you know a child only grows when they're sleeping? Because your greatest growth comes when you're resting. Which means you already know what's on the other side. And so for you and I, this is what it's like to be seated with Christ. But the Bible says in Ephesians 1, it says, Blessed be the God, our, our Lord Jesus Christ, who's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in where? Heavenly places. But where are we seated? In heavenly places. Where is Jesus seated? In heavenly places. So if, if, if I'm seated in heavenly place, uh, places where Jesus is seated in heavenly places and all my blessings come from, from heavenly places, then why am I trying to work? when I should just be receiving everything God has for my life. It's what you talk about when you're working. Now, now, why don't you think about this? Most everybody in this room has been seated in this seat longer than you've been seated in that seat. So, so when you were seated in this seat, the world, this seat is the one that morphed you. Most of who you are today has been shaped by sitting in this seat. The difference is, is that this seat, it operates by feelings. That seat operates by faith. This seat, when you get hurt, you hurt people. That seat, when you get hurt, you let the Lord heal you. This seat, this seat marginalizes you. It minimizes you. It's conditioned based on how you were raised, who you were raised by, which means that you've already were born with a disadvantage. That seat breaks every limit off your life. This seat, this seat is a seat of slavery. It's bondage, it's manipulation, it's sin, it's anxiety, it's stress, it's worry, it's fornication. It is all these different things that are in this seat. So one day, you get an invitation to come to Freedom House, and when you come, sit it in this seat, you have to hear the, the word. And when you were seated in this seat, hearing what comes from that seat, you began to see yourself like you never have. You started to see yourself compared to what that seat looked like. That seat's telling you, you can accomplish everything. But all you heard in your life sitting in this seat is that you can only get so far. You started to hear in that seat, man, all things are possible. And in this seat, you're sitting there saying, man, I've been limited all my life. You started to hear in that seat, man, God wants to increase you, prosper your life. But in this seat, all you heard is that we don't have enough. We're barely getting by. We, don't have, we, we, can't, we can't really go do what we want to do. And so what happened was, was that you started to pay attention a little bit more to that seat. 
And then you came again. And you started to hear the same thing. And so here's what happened to you all. You're in this seat. You heard from that seat. And the pastor says, hey, if you want to get saved, which means if you want to switch seats, there's something you have to do. And, you, and he said, he said, repeat after me. Now, you didn't know what he was going to say. You had no idea. You didn't know if he would have sat there and said, Lord, as they go run into a car, Lord, as I go run into a car, may they get hit by, you hadn't, you weren't given a script. So how did you even know what he was going to say? What made you even repeat it when you don't even know him? Something inside of you believed. And so you said, Lord, come into my heart. Lord, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of my sin. I want to be born again. I'm going to be born again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And so here's what happened instantly, the Bible says. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become brand new. And I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. So your new creation is here. Your old life is over here. But your old life is what shaped you the longest. Your new life is what's shaping you now. And so the reality is, is that you come to church and you hear the word and the word is being preached and you're like, praise God, I'm a prosper. Praise God, God has increased my life. Praise God, God's opening up doors. Praise God, we're overcoming mountains. Praise God, we're overcomers. And then Monday, you're like, man, praise God. But boy, Lord, you got to help. <laughs> praise the Lord. And then by Tuesday, you're like, man, God, you got to come through. And then by Thursday, you're like, Lord, I don't know, man. I mean, this thing's getting hard. And then by, by, by Friday, you're almost like, should I sit in this seat? Because, man, I'm telling you, Lord, I don't know if I can do this any longer. I don't know if we can make it. I don't, I, I, Lord, I just don't know what's happening. And here's been your life. Your life has been, you come on Sundays and you're in this seat and you can conquer the world. But by Thursday or Friday, you're tempting back to come to this seat because at the end of the day, this seat is what taught you how to react to your problems. Come on, can I go deep today? I said, can I go deep today? You can't fight the world seated in the world. So you can't fight at what the devil is good at. Because the devil only knows how to fight by feelings. So he gets you to feel insecure, feel anxiety, feel worry, feel pressure, feel those, that lustful fear. Because lust is a feeling. He, he gets you to feel broke, feel that you can't do nothing, feel you can't overcome because he's an expert at fighting from feelings. And you can't defeat the enemy by fighting with your feelings. This is why you land up losing battles sometimes because the only way you can defeat your feelings is by fighting by faith, which is the word of God. Come on, somebody. I feel the anointing right now. And so you're sitting there going, I just, man, why do I feel defeated? Because you're fighting with the same weapons. You're fighting with your emotions. Oh, man, oh, man, that's real bad, man. I, man, I, 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 I've had it bad all my life. Well, everybody's had it bad all their life. Well, Pastor, oh, man, you don't realize, man, I'm getting the raw end of the deal at work. Stop. Stop fighting from who you used to be. Fight from your new creation. I'm more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Greater is he that's inside of me than he that's in the world. My life shall prosper in the name of Jesus because I'm an heir to Abraham and I'm a child of the Most High God. I'm never going back to that seat. 
You, you, you fight a different warfare when you're fighting from here. You're fighting from victory. You're fighting from power. You're fighting from authority. You're fighting from wisdom. You're fighting from understanding. You're walking in love. Ain't nobody worth it enough for you to not love them. Because at the end of the day, they can be dysfunctional because they're in that seat. You ought to have pity because at the end of the day, that was you. So I'm, I'm going I'm I'm to walk in faith. I'm going to walk in victory. And, and here's what happens. Most believers land up living defeated because they allow their feelings to dictate their faith. In other words, you believe more by what you feel than what you know. And so you have to come to church to be reminded that what you know is greater than what you feel. The Bible doesn't say we walk by feelings. The Bible says we walk by what? Come on, we walk by faith, which means that our feelings should follow our what? Our faith. We don't allow our faith to follow our feelings. Because at the end of the day, my feelings only know how to fight according to the world. But when I fight by faith, I am fighting by the spirit of the living God where my authority has been given to me. And oh, I feel God right now. And so, and so, and so you have to get to a place where Paul got to. And he says, I crucify my flesh. Daily, which means I take this out of the equation, which means when the feelings come, I cannot have a seat to revert back to because I made a choice before I walked out my house. My flesh is crucified. So when the feelings come, because they'll come a bad day, I mean, a bad moment. It's just a bad moment. But you keep on wallowing in those feelings and that bad moment becomes a bad day. How many of you know, how many of you know that at the end of the day, that moment wasn't wasn't supposed to last a day? So the moment you didn't have control over. But making it a bad day was 100% your choice. It's like the children of Israel, right? The children of Israel was like, hey, it's going to take you 11 days to get to the promised land. How many know 11 days was God's choice? Staying in there 40 years, that was their choice. So here's what you got to realize. You don't have a choice when problems come, but you sure got a choice how long they stay. And they will stay as long as you continue to walk by your feelings. Because when you start walking by faith, you're sitting there saying, oh, no, 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 no. Those problems can come all they want. But I'm just going to go ahead and stay seated in my rightful place on the lap of Jesus. And guess what's going to happen? He's going to fight my battle for me. Now, now, let me show you. Come here. Come here, Pastor Louie. Real quick. Now, now, no one take a picture. So Louie was here. He was in the world. Got saved. And God brought him here. Now, Pastor Louie's here. All your pastors are here. No, no, come over here. This is what it looks like. Louie, come on, sit right here. (laughs) Don't take no pictures. This is what Jesus was talking about. That we are seated together. So watch this. This This is how it looks. Look how close Jesus is to his ear. How many of you know Jesus doesn't have to shout? Your problems do. But Jesus whispers because he's this close. When Louis chooses to get up and go, I can't take this, the feelings And he's beginning to wallow in his feelings and reverting back 
to the chair. Guess where Jesus is still at? And this is why it's so difficult to hear Jesus when you're drowning in feelings. It's why you'll do things, and then when the feelings go away, you regret it. Why? What made you do it? Your old ways. What made you do it? Your old life. You are seated with Christ. Meaning, you are one with Christ. And so when Louis decides every morning, I'm going to crucify my flesh. I'm coming to the presence of God. I'm going to open up the word. <laughs> Come on. He's seated with me, and we become what? One. One. Which means, Louis saying, Jesus, I'm going through this situation, and you know who I am? And this is Jesus saying, I know, son but I'm going through it with you. I'm right there. But Jesus, Jesus, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't have the strength. And he goes, oh, no, no, no. Just let me love you. I'll fight for you. I'll fight your battles. I promised you I'll fight your battles. I'll give you every weapons to fight. I just need you to stay seated with me. That's it. That's all I got to do. So, so thank you, man. So the first thing is, is that you're, when you're seated with Christ means, when, when, you're, when, when you're seated with Christ means you're one with Christ. Right. The Bible talks about it. The Bible says this. The Bible says that we've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I, but Christ lives in me. Why? Because I'm living in my new life, not my old ways. This is my old ways. That's my new life. Well, what, what, what's involved in this seat? Well, the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 1, for all the promises of God are yes and amen. Well, where are the promises of God? They surely are not in that seat. Where are they at? They're in this what? They're in this seat. So all the promises of God are applied to my life when I'm in this seat. The promises of God aren't applied to your life when you're in this seat. This is why you were broke. This is why you were hurt. This is why you were going out hurting people. It's why, it's why, you, it, 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 it's why you stopped dreaming. You remember, you used to dream. But see, everybody in this seat that's seated with you is being minimized and marginalized too. So you just stopped telling your big dreams to minimize people and marginalize people because they couldn't believe you because at the end of the day, they couldn't believe in themselves. So all of a sudden, you come to this seat, and every limitation is broken off, and you tell someone their dream, and they're like, really, that's it? That's too small. You got way more inside of you. Why are you dreaming that small? God got bigger plans for your life. And you're like, man, what's the difference? Well, because all the promises of God are yes and amen in this seat. So you're walking in the miracles of God. Well, it was a miracle that took you from this seat to that seat. But how did the miracle happen? You had to hear it, believe it, confess it, and receive it. I heard the word. I believed it. I asked Jesus to come into my heart. I received it. And then guess what? I got the miracle. Well, then, Pastor Obed, how do I continue to get miracles? The same way. I hear the word. I believe it. I confess it. And then I receive it. Pastor Obed, I'm believing for my, my children to get saved. Okay, do you believe your children get saved? Of course I can. Why? Because Joshua 24 verse 15 says, that's for me my house will serve the Lord. So then what am I going to do? 
When those feelings want to come of fear, my kids, I don't know what's happening, and it wants me to revert back to those seats. No, I just sit there. I stay seated, and I say, I'm not going to give in to those feelings. I'm going to tell you, devil, that Joshua 24, verse 15 says, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So I believe it. I receive it, I confess it, and I'm just waiting for the miracle to happen. But you ain't getting me off this seat. Your husband start tripping, your wife start tripping. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not, we're, we're not, we're not, no, we're not, we're not going to divorce. What God has put together, let no man separate. God is the healer of it all. At the end of the day, I receive it, I believe it, I heard it, I confess it. Well, you don't understand, oh, bad man, I'm in real estate, and it's down like 80%. They may be down 80% but you're in a different seat. You're in a seat where the promises of God belong to you because you're a child of Abraham. You're the blessing. You're an heir to Jesus. You're not the world's responsibility. You're God's responsibility. He'll open up doors where no one can. So why are you repeating those things? You sitting there having conversations with your fellow real estate, yeah, the market's bad. Man, I used to sell so much. I was making so much money. Man, now it's down 80%. That's what they're saying. Why are you saying the same thing when you ain't even in that seat? You are in a seat where God owns a cattle on a thousand hills. He'll open up the doors that no man can. If he has to cause the ravens to feed you, he'll send the ravens to feed you before you ever go through a season of lack. You're just in a different seat. One of my guys at my church owns one of the largest mortgage companies in the country. He was telling me, Pastor Obed, as I close, man, the, 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 you know, the, the mortgage is down 80%. He says, but we're thriving. I said, you want to know why? Because you're in a different seat. He, 600 staff people, and he's just been speaking confessions, and they ain't even believers. He said, I don't want to hear one negative word that comes out. We're not going to agree what the economy is saying. You can agree with it, but I'm not going to agree with it because at the end of the day, Listen, I'm seated in a different seat. So as I close, what you say reveals what you believe. I don't have to look into your heart. I can't even see it. I just hear what comes out your mouth. And anything that comes out your mouth reveals what you really believe in your heart. That's why faith at its fullness is when it's confessed, not just when it's heard. You could hear it all day and still don't believe it. It's when you start confessing it. It's when faith is at its fullness. I remember. I remember the day when I got my, my first job. It was at Soup Plantation. And, it, and, 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 and I got paid minimum wage. $3.35. I was so excited. I got my first paycheck. I went to, to go cash it at the bank. I told my mom, I said, Mom, take me to the mall because I'm going to Foot Locker. I'm going to buy me some Cortez Nikes. Amen. And she was like, oh, no, you got to give me the tie. I'm like, what are you talking about? I, I'm not an adult yet. She's like, no, you got you to give me the time. I was mad. I went and bought the Cortez Nikes. Two weeks later, I get another job. I mean, two weeks later, I get another paycheck. Go cash it. Give me the time. I'm like, dang, Mom. I'm going to go buy me some Levi's. Come on, some Dickies. So one day, I'm, I'm working the table, and the people from Target were there. I guess they liked the way I serviced them at at Sioux Plantation. And the guy goes, hey, if you ever want a job, I'll give you a job at Target. I said, really? He goes, yeah, come by today. So I went by, filled out an application. He gave me a job, $4. And I, I was excited. I was like, I got a raise. I got a promotion. <laughs> Praise God. I was, I was in appliances. I don't even know what appliances are. <laughs> but I was selling them like crazy. One day, my brother-in-law calls me after Sunday a few months later. He says, hey, man, 
we just had someone had, that had to leave and we need someone to file all of our negotiation papers. And um, man, you can come after school. I said, how much are you going to pay me? He's like, $8. I'm like, dang, $8. Okay, God, I'm going I'm to give, I'm, I'm give you what belongs to you. And so I started working in that area. I was still in high school, coming after school. Well, one day I came and everybody was gone. And there was a case that needed to be negotiated. So I called him. I said, Steve, the, the attorneys, they're on the phone. They, 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 they want this case settled. It needs to be done by 3.30. He goes, well, then go do it. You're a good talker. So I did it. I was excited. I got more money than what we were supposed to get. So finally, he gives me a couple of more. And then months later, he says, hey, I want to offer you a position to be a negotiator. And I go, you mean go to court? In suits, in a briefcase <laughs> with some attorneys? Well, how much are you going to pay me? He's like, $15 an hour. I said, I can go buy me a Mustang now. <laughs> so I went and bought me a convertible Mustang. Come on, I was 17 years old, pulling up to high school as a senior. Everybody, was, everybody would come out with some jeans. I'd come out of school with a suit because I was on my way to court settling some cases. Yeah. I started doing that. And then I went to college. I went to college on a scholarship. Didn't have to pay anything. And so one day my pastor calls me and he's like, hey, you need to come to church tonight. I'm like, I got, I, I got homework. He says, now you need to come. We have an evangelist here. He wants to talk to you. So I land up going. We have dinner. And he says, hey, your pastor told me this morning at lunch that you're called to the ministry and that he can't really do nothing to help you. But I have a position open if you want to travel with me all around the world. I said, are you kidding me? He was like, yeah. And, and I said, how much are you going to pay me? <laughs> he gave me this offer. I traveled all around the world. I was in Bible college, fulfilling Bible college. They would talk about ministers in Bible college, and I'd be at their houses. I was like, God, you're doing something. I began to grow, begin to give God what belongs to him. And then one day, I land up leaving to take on a consulting company. I build it. And then this denomination that I'd worked so hard to get said, okay, we're going to test you. We got three churches in the Palm Springs area that are jacked up. We need you to go help put them together. I said, okay. So I go over there, help them. It's successful. I'm on the airplane getting ready to fly out. And the Lord speaks to me and says, I want you to come back and start a church. I said, devil, you're a liar. <laughs> you know, I need you to do it. Okay. A year later, my wife and I get into U-Haul with no guarantees. We leave the L.A. area, go start a church. And the first thing we did was give to an organization. Nineteen years doing that four campuses but when I was in school the Lord spoke to me and said volunteer at TBN so I went there and I said do you guys need anybody to volunteer oh yeah you can rope hold the ropes to the cameras okay and every Tuesday and Thursday pastor I was faithful faithful finally they said hey we're gonna pay you Praise God. I was faithful. Who would have thought 30 years later, God would give me a company that its first client would be TBN? You see, what, what am I saying? When you live in this seat, no eyes have seen and no ear has heard what God has for you. When you're in this seat, you can't even imagine what God wants. Getting a new building is an opportunity for those people out there to go from that seat to this seat. But for you, that new building 
is to get you to get bigger in this seat than you thought you never would. Your obedience to this opportunity will catapult you to the place God has for your life. Friends, nothing ever leaves your life without something greater returning back to it. Nothing ever leaves your hands without returning with something greater. Nothing never leaves your mouth without something returning greater. What I feel the Holy Spirit wants to do today, and he did in the first service, and I'm on my way to Irvine, is to remind you, if you're going to be in that seat, you got to be sold out to that seat. That means that seat has your future, it has your blessings, it has your abundance, it has everything you need and even the things you can't even dream of. So here's what we're going to decide today. Pastor, I'm done living by feelings. I'm going to live by faith. I'm going to put his word at, at a test. And there's going to be a bunch of tests coming up. Bigger buildings need more dream teamers. Well, I don't know. I just have a lot of stuff going on. That's feelings. Well, hey, man, guys, we're coming close. We're this close. We just need a little bit more when it comes to giving. Oh, I don't know. I'm tapped out. That's feelings. When are you going to trust him and say, Lord, you already knew this opportunity was coming because I'm here. So I can't let this pass me by. I have to say yes because my yes is going to open up yeses in my life that me, myself alone cannot accomplish. And that's the kind of God we serve. Amen? Come on, stand to your feet. I'm going to have Pastor Louie come and end service so I can get over to Irvine. But you'll let me pray for you real quick. And I'm telling you that, that my wife and I are living in a miracle season right now. Our church, I was telling Pastor Louie, we're, we just got doing a whole series in the summer called Miracles on the Shores. I believe you're in the right vein. I'll never forget calling Pastor Josiah. And I said, Hey, is Marie around? He goes, yeah, she's right here. I said, put me on speakerphone. I said, I want to tell you guys something. I said, when I was traveling with this ministry, we would preach at Melody Land all the time. The greatest ministers would minister at Melody Land. It was the epic center of revival. People from all over the world would come for their whole month of revival meetings. Most ministries that became nationwide, worldwide on TBN were birthed out of Melody Land. Pastor Ralph Wilkerson got sick, passed it on to a guy out of, out of South Africa named Pastor ne Neville. Neville didn't really have the vision. And so Neville landed up giving up the property they landed up selling that piece of property to Disneyland. Disneyland converts it into the big old shopping center where all the restaurants are today. When you go to that Bubba place and you go to that Cheesecake Factory, you are actually sitting beneath where the altars were at that place. And I called Pastor Marie and, jo and Josiah and I said, I want you to hear me today. I just came out of prayer. I want you to hear me today. You guys have been positioned to resurrect and finish what God started at that place. That's why it's been a battle. It's been a fight. Come on, your pastors have been fighting. Everything that the devil has been throwing at them, they just keep on bouncing back. 
and they're saying, we're not going to that seat. Come on, we started in this seat. We're walking by faith, and we're going to get there by faith in Jesus' name. And you are too. But you got to make the same decision they made. Come on, when their house got flooded, when all hell started breaking loose, Judah Bear got hurt. It was just, it was just like a, an avalanche. But he says, I got to stay in this seat. I can't be moved by these things. I know this is the devil. He just tried to scare me. It ain't happening. Father, I release an anointing of faith in this place. I'm talking major faith. I'm talking abundance of faith in this place. Lord, your word says that faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But you also say that there is the gift of faith. And that gift of faith is for seasons like this in miracle season. So right now, I release the gift of faith over this house. A faith that is beyond the supernatural, beyond their own natural faith they have today. Let them believe big, dream big, and understand that God, you're about to do big things in their life. It's not about moving into a big building. It's about making them bigger than what they are right now. I release this in the name of Jesus. Come on, and all God's people say, amen. God bless you. Hey, thanks so much for watching our service at Freedom House OC. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It's always my honor, my wife's honor to bring you God's word. And I know that God's best is in your future. Make sure to share, uh, click the bell icon so you're always up to date when new content comes out because we want to be a blessing to your life. We want this channel to be a channel that feeds your future and leads you closer to God. Hey, we love you. God bless.